So as the first video for our first impressions, we are going to just go over Arduino in general. And we're going to go over this, and then in another tutorial, we're going to go over the IDE, or the Integrated Development Environment. And then we're also going to go over some of the more uh, niche things about Arduino is because there's actually quite a few cool things going. But first, I want to talk about the ecosystem in general. So if you have not heard of Arduino, you are either, either just jumping into the electronics industry and you're just jumping into your different options, or, or, or that's about it. I mean, Arduino is so incredibly popular, and there's so much stuff out there. And that is actually why we're talking about it, and that's one of the reasons we want to bring it up. So Arduino is an ecosystem. It's almost more of an idea. Of, of devices that are made to be as simple to create stuff as possible. So there is an actual company card called Arduino and they create the official Arduino boards, but it's all open source. So people, a lot of people have created Arduino boards that just don't have Arduino on them, but they're Arduino compatible either in terms of hardware um, or in terms of software using being able to use the Arduino IDE. And so I, this, that's a great example. This is Adafruit. They did their uh, Feather series, which is compatible with the Ar IDE. So you can use the Arduino IDE and code to use it. Um, this is something we're going to go over in quite a bit more detail a little bit later. I think that's DigiSpark that created that. And they don't say Arduino on them anywhere, but that's just for legal purposes. They are based on the code and the structure that Arduino has set up. So the reason Arduinos are so popular is that, first of all, they're again, they're open source. So even though you have the official boards, there are so many variants that you can basically get whatever you want. You can get some really crazy powerful ones that are very expensive, or you can get incredibly inexpensive ones that are literally one to two dollars. I think this was like maybe $2. Um, so there, it's very inexpensive to get, in, to get into. But besides that, they're so easy to use. On the software side, they have created all of these layers so that instead of you having to go down in the, into the nitty gritty and worry about timing and worry about maybe bit banging some difficult um, software to emulate hardware, everything's in there. If you, if you wanna send a message, you just send like send message and then you say send your message and it does everything you need to to send a message via UART or something like that. They have made it so the barrier to entry in electronics is incredibly low. And that is why Arduino is so awesome. An additional benefit of using the Arduino is that everything's broken out. So everything's easy to access. You have all of your pins on the side broken out. You on the smaller ones will get something like this, but even this you can just easily solder in a header and use it. But if you don't want to solder, if you don't want to deal with that, you just get an Arduino Uno like this. And this is built into a board, so you don't even need that. And you can just use little jumper wires from this to your motor, whatever you want. So again, the barrier to entry is so low. You don't have to solder. You don't really have to know much about programming. And any questions you have, it's almost guaranteed that somebody else is going to have the exact same question you do. And you can find the answer somewhere on the internet. I, and it's funny because uh, I was talking to Sergey about this. And both of us, at first, we were doing our own thing. He was a uh, Texas Instruments guy, and I was a microchip guy. Uh, when we first started and we were a little bit snobbish to be honest we were looking at that like oh psh, that's so easy you don't you don't have to be a real engineer you don't have to be a real uh tinker to to do that and then we actually tried it for the first time and we're like holy cow yeah there are definitely drawbacks to this but it is so powerful and so simple i remember the first time i had an arduino i put on an led and i just had it get brighter and dimmer just like and that, and that was it. And from me plugging it in after I'd already downloaded and installed the IDE to getting an LED to get brighter and dimmer, it was less than 15 minutes. I mean, less than 15 minutes on a brand new, never before used platform. And that just blew my mind. I was just like, I cannot believe that because usually it takes me much, much longer than that to even get an LED to turn on and off on a new system, let alone get the timing where I can get it so it's gradually getting brighter and gradually getting dimmer. And the reason I could do that was, again, the software is incredibly simple. They, they put so many layers on it, which definitely hurts in the efficiency side, 
but they put so many layers on it so that you don't have to worry about those nitty gritty details of flipping individual registers and things like that. And then second, it's not only so well documented officially by the Arduino site, but also unofficially by the millions of people out there that are using them and having questions and going on forums or saying, wow, I've created this great tool and they throw it up onto their website. There is just huge amounts of documentation out there and people helping each other. And that is probably, those are the two big things that make Arduino so amazing is that one, it's simplified already, and two, it's just one of the largest ecosystems in the entire embedded and electronics industry. So let's talk a little bit about these varieties. So these two are the only two Arduino branded boards that I have here. Both of them say Arduino on them, and you've got the Arduino 101 and the Arduino Uno. And this Uno is incredibly popular. It's their low cost, um, entry level, it doesn't have as many bells and whistles, but at the same time, even with the restrictions and the, the limited capabilities of this, it's very, very powerful. Compared to our PIC 10 f 200 that we are dealing with, this has you know, orders of magnitude more uh, program space and RAM for anything you put in there, which it, again, you need because of the reduced efficiency um, with all of those software layers on there. But at the same time, unless you're doing something pretty complicated, the Arduino Uno is actually good for the vast majority of projects that you're going to want to do at an entry level. So it's pretty cool that you've got that. This is an Arduino 101. I haven't used this one, but it's uh, got some wireless uh, aspects built in, and it's just uh, it's a different option from the official line. Now, getting out of the official Arduino line, as I showed earlier, you have the Adafruit version. And this is a much smaller footprint than you get there. And it also has um, a built-in card reader right here. So Arduino said, okay, we don't want to put a card reader in a, small, um, in a small board like that. And Adafruit said, well, we do. And that is the beauty of open source hardware. And then here we have even smaller, even simpler, another piece of hardware that's even cheaper. And if you want something that's going to be doing the bare minimum, just flicking on a light on and off at different times or some basic stuff, this is ideal, but even this is surprisingly powerful. So we'll get into more detail on these later, but I finally wanna show this one. I think this is cool. I put it all back in the styrofoam that it came from, but this is an RF Duino. So they made a, a play on the name Arduino, and this is specializing in using the Arduino IDE and using that ecosystem, but it's specifically for wireless communications between its own system. So you'll see a lot of people that have done this and all of them want to be the next big person and they're trying to take an already very stable uh, ecosystem and make a spin-off that is going to be just as interesting. And so again, no matter what you want, you can almost always find the hardware that you need for your application. And that's in terms of size, pinout, uh, processing power, all of that sort of stuff. And you can use this anywhere from flicking lights on and off to uh, with the bigger Arduinos like the Arduino Mega. You can run 3D printers on it and I think it's even overkill. You don't need that much uh, power as the Arduino Mega has for a 3D printer because it gets quite hefty on the hardware side. So that is a, a brief overview of at least the ecosystem and the hardware. We're, again, we're gonna get into the IDE next, and then we're gonna talk more about some of the variants that are specific to Arduino, and then we're gonna talk about, and this is great for kids, but how you can actually use that MIT Scratch programming tool with Arduino, which is ideal for little kids. So hopefully you found this interesting. I've just been loving all the things that I've been learning with Sergey about this. If you want more details, uh, particularly about the hardware, the details in terms of RAM, processor speed, and the actual chips used on each of these, go check out the written tutorial on circuitbread.com. I hope you found this interesting. If you do, subscribe, like the video, all that jazz, and we will catch you in the next one.